be. This is a scanning EM. It's a fruit fly egg or a Drosophila egg uh, almost immediately after fertilization. It's still a single cell. It's about maybe half a millimeter or 500 microns long. You look at the surface, you don't see anything very much. If you were able to look inside, you'd see that in this zone here, there's a, a, the nucleus of the single cell, which is the product of the, fertile, uh, of the fusion of the female pronucleus and the male pronucleus. You look at it, and it doesn't really look very interesting. The amazing thing, though, is that what, the, and what this embryo has to do to become interesting is to convert from being a single cell into a multicellular organism where individual cells can be uh, can assume different fates and begin to do different things. Now, one of the interesting things about fly uh, embryonic development in Drosophila is that the embryo is able to do this extraordinarily rapidly, such that after two and a half hours, this single cell has now transformed itself into a multicellular organism with now 6,000 cells, about 100 cells along the anterior uh, what's the future head, future tail, anterior, posterior axis of the embryo. And the way that it's able to do this transformation so rapidly is that what it's done is that unlike most other organisms where when cells divide and replicate, you have a DNA replication and a mitosis and that's followed by cell division. In Drosophila, during the early stages of development, these mitotic divisions, these replications of, of, of nuclei, occur without cell division, such that an individual fertilized egg, which starts out with a fused of the single nucleus, goes after one mitotic cycle, goes from one nuclei to two nuclei. The cycles are synchronous, so the nuclei divide again without cell division, so that you have from two nuclei to four nuclei, eight nuclei. And what happens after about an hour and a half to two hours is that through a, a sequence of 13 of these synchronous rounds of nuclear replication. The embryo is now still a single cell, but it's a single cell with 6,000 nuclei in the surface. And amazingly then, at that point, these mitotic divisions temporarily stop, and it's only at that point that the cytoskeleton and the membrane synthesis is reorganized in this embryo to now make new membrane and uh, such that membrane can be pulled down, plasma membrane can be pulled down between individual nuclei to separate them or partition them into individual cells. And it's after that process that's called cellularization that the embryo has now converted itself from one cell into an embryo with multiple cells, 6,000 cells. And it's only at that point that those cells can begin that when you have individual cells, that those cells can begin to become different from each other and show distinct behaviors that are ultimately related to their fates, skin or muscle. Now, there's one other thing that's really interesting about this phase, and that's that if you look at the early stages, when the embryo is undergoing these rapid mitotic divisions, all the gene products that it needs, all the proteins and all the RNAs are supplied by the embryo's mother put into the egg, unfertilized egg, before fertilization. And what the embryo is doing is just going through a cyclic pattern of DNA replication and mitosis, doing the same thing over and over again using the same gene products, these gene products that are supplied by the mother. What happens at uh, once those repetitive cycles are done and the embryo wants to do something new or different is that it begins to transcribe its own genomes. It begins to make what we call zygotic RNAs and zygotic proteins. And so at this point, it becomes very, then a very interesting point for us in development. Because initially, up for these first two and a half hours, the embryo has been doing something repetitive over and over with using only maternally supplied gene products. And then the sense is that when it begins to transcribe its own genes and transcribe specific genes, uh, that are required ultimately to do new things, to go on to the next step in development. So the sense that this stage becomes really important for us, for our, for us to look at because it marks a stage not only where something new begins to happen, you stop mitosis, you begin to change, cells begin to become distinct from each other, but it's also associated with adding new gene products. Now,
What I'd like to, though, is just continue on with the description of development, keep, for you to keep in mind, though, that now what we're going to be looking at is some, begins to reflect the active contribution of gene uh, in the embryo itself. What happens between these two stages, you go from uniform behaviors to distinct cellular behaviors. You can see that again in looking at the scanning EMs that we have here. This is, again, the embryo that I showed you before with 6,000 cells, 100 cells all, all arranged along the anterior posterior axis. All the cells look pretty much the same. If I'd fixed this embryo for scanning EM about five minutes later, what you would have seen is that now all of the cells in the embryo are no longer the same shape. There are clearly distinct things happening. There's an area here that's ultimately going to form the head of the embryo that's uh, marked off by this fold that's called the cephalic or head fold from the rest of the embryo. There are other things beginning to happen in the embryo. Clearly by this stage, at this point, five, ten minutes later, the cells are marking their, their, their uh, showing distinct behaviors and showing how, how, how different they are.